wanted to start this year off with just a little recap of how I work my designs. The first thing uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, just for those that are new, just to remind you. Okay, first of all, this is not like freeform knitting where you're just knitting random, you know, uh, patterns uh, or random designs. I, this is, even though I do not have written patterns, and I want to say that right up front, I do not produce written patterns of my designs. I have notes and I have, um, you know, layout of the pattern, which I am sharing with you on the YouTube. So that instead of buying a pattern, you just simply can find the pattern on the YouTube and follow it step by step. It's just easier for me that way because, like I said, I knit all the time. And, I, you know, just to sit down and try to write a pattern and rewrite it, it's just easy for me. I, and I enjoy, I enjoy your company. <laughs> I enjoy just sharing it step by step. Like I say, I'm not a professional. I'm not an expert. I'm just having fun. I enjoy knitting. And I'm just knitting things that I like to knit in my life. And all I'm doing is sharing it, and you're welcome to enjoy it. That's all there is. I, I, there's nothing else uh, that I'm trying to do. I am happy uh, doing what I'm doing and enjoying your company. First of all, uh, like I said, I do not have written patterns. And uh, what I'm trying to uh, share with you is how to take or how to create your own design, really. That's really what it is. How to use a stitch book, how to find your own um, size and how to, how to get your pattern to fit, how to take your uh, the stitches that you like and turn them into a nice wearable project. Like I said, this is the year that, you know, I hope you want to knit or crochet for yourself. My designs are simple, like I said, because I'm not a professional or an expert. And I try to use simple construction. But like I said, it's not freeform knitting. It is knitting by uh, basic knitting principles and rules and stitches and, you know, everything that you normally would, would find at uh, knitting with anyone else. I just don't have written patterns. And I go about my uh, construction just a little different. So, that's what I want to share with you. All right, first of all, just a quick recap of, because I can't go back over all the tapes, but I have a, a Jay's Knitting, um, um, I have a notebook video that goes over some of the detail, and, and I'll put all that out so that you can see it. I'll, I'll put that up uh, in the description box. But, for example, here's a nice little form. <laughs> My friend Paula gave me this. <laughs> So I'm going to use it. I'll call her Paula. Okay, so here's my friend Paula. <laughs> oh, she'll get a big kick out of that. Okay, so, like I say, I want to knit a sweater. I just, you know, that's mainly what I knit are large items. I don't do a lot of hats. I love scarves, and I'll do scarves. And I like uh, shawls, and you've seen, well, you've seen the things I knit. And I have, like, three really good categories that I or styles of sweaters that I like the first one is like a, a rec, uh, excuse me a square where you just take two squares about you know uh, and you make them you know put them to the size that fits you and then you sew your shoulder seams and then your side seams leave your arms open and you have a nice sweater using a pretty stitch to and a pretty yarn of course to make it beautiful the next one is what uh, the phase we're in now is where I come over the back, come up the back, down the, separate at the neck for the right and left fronts and come down. And um, it's just that simple. It's, it's not anything. The, uh, what we're going to try to do is help you find the correct, your correct size or your correct numbers. And that's what I want to talk about. Okay, first of all, let me just go go through this. 
the easiest way, and this will work no matter what needles you like to knit with. All right, I knit with size eight. Let me get me. This is just a sample here now. Size eight, size nine, and a size ten or ten and a half. So I have three needle choices just right off the bat that I would like to knit with. Okay, then I normally use medium weight yarn, worsted yarn, okay, and you can look on your band, your um, yarn band, and it's uh, designated by the number of number four. Medium yarn, number four, and they it usually calls for a number eight needle. Sometimes they'll call for a nine, uh, like banner. So, my needles of choice is number eight, nines, tens, or ten and a half. You could easily do what I'm going to show you or, and, and share with you. With You might just like smaller yarn. You might, oh, I really don't like that. Okay, then you could go six, seven, eight. You just need three needle sizes. Uh and the appropriate yarn weight for at least one of those needles. So if you did six, seven, eight, you'd have um, uh, yarn that is suitable for a size six or at least a size seven. I, my yarns are always suitable for size eight, but I can, once I find my, the number, no, I'm gonna show you how to find your numbers, I can work with nines, tens, and even 10 and a half and still have a nice fit. I don't know how this sounds, <laughs> but when I first said it, I, I was so nervous. But you know what? Nobody seemed to like, oh, so I'm just going with it, people. So what I do, first of all, everyone, if you've been knitting a while, and if you're new, you're just going to have to kind of listen until we get into a project. You know, the first thing you do, and all patterns, just about everything calls for it, you knit a swatch. And a swatch is just a piece of fabric that you knit. Say if my needle size is eight, is what I normally would use. I'd find some yarn that's comparable to an eight, or compatible, that's what I want to say, excuse me, to an eight, and I'd knit my swatch. However many, you know, rows you want to knit. And then what you do, you sit down and you have a ruler, and then you sit down and you count how many stitches, use it to the inch, that you need, um, you know, in this swatch. Well, you know, I tried to learn the swatch method and all that, and, and you know, I just couldn't get it because every time I would knit something, it it just the swatch doesn't take into the effect the stretch or the real feel of your body. It just it's just a piece of fabric that you've knitted. You know, it's, I mean, you know, it, 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 it might fit, but it may not. So, one day, I just took matters into my own hand. This has been years ago. Like I said, I've been knitting this way for years. I got myself a measuring tape, and I just measured. You don't have to go all the way around. I just went from where I'd like my sweater to fall to end. And I went, and I just measured from my right side to my left side. From my right side across the front, because usually us women have a little something in the front, <laughs> too. You know, I'm not talking about hips now. I'm talking about where you'd want a sweater. These are not hips, hipsters. These are where you'd regular in a nice little sweater. So from my right side to my left side, and I take that in inches. Okay, I don't know about centimeters and all that. I'm just, all this is in... U.S. inches. Okay, so for me, say if I'm 25 inches, just to make it, uh, or 24 inches, just to make it easy to work with, 24 inches from right side to the left side. So I'd write that down. First thing I'd do is write down, oh, 20, 24 inches. Okay, now the next thing I would do, like I say, you could swatch, and if you count your swatch, excuse me, okay, and you'd measure out uh, using a ruler or, you know, they have a little swatch gauge. 
in counting out, it normally works out to be about four stitches to the inch. Well, four times 24 or four times, uh, say 25, I'll make it 25, make it come out so you can understand it. All right, so that's usually, a, well, that's 100. Well, I already know that 100 stitches on a number eight is too large for me, even at my present weight. It's just a few stitches too large. And you think, well, that's just a few stitches and, and you know, but you have to remember, the swatch does not take into the, the stretch factor of knitting. It's just a swatch, you know? You, but when you knit and put it on, it is going to stretch. And you're really adding a lot more stitches than you think, you know, by doing it that way. So I came up with, this is just me now, I'm just sharing. <laughs> I made myself a real-time tape, real-time measuring tape. And let me show, share with you how I did this. And I'm gonna try to pace myself on the camera so my camera won't run, right, run out right in the middle. First thing I did, I went, I picked it, looked through my stash, and I picked out yarns that I really like, you know, that I'm gonna use a lot or that I've been using a lot. So right here, here's Karen Simply Soft. That's just a yarn I always use for a lot of soft things or nice sweaters, little, you know. Okay, that is a number eight needle. Karen Simply Saw. So I sat down and I cast on just a whole bunch of stitches big enough to wrap around me. See, it's like a measuring tape. See, I just cast on a whole bunch of stitches on my number eight circulars while I'm watching TV. Okay, now you might think, oh gosh, Jay, look at all. Yeah, but once you do this, you don't have to ever do it again. You don't have to really swatch. You you're gonna you're gonna I'm telling you're gonna see how it works. Okay. So once I got that, I did like a I did a one by one rib. Then I did some stockinette, and I did it for about two or three inches in my number eight on my Karen Simply Soft yarn right there. Then I simply moved up a needle. I went to a number nine, and I got the yarn that I when I'm working with a number nine, and that's Vanna. I always like uh, and her yarn calls for a number nine and I just continued the pattern I mean I just kept right on knitting and I did that for about another three or so inches and I in uh, this time with a two by two rib just to have it already on here see one by one rib two by two on my nine now watch when I'm done and I feel like okay I've got about you know, about five inches or so of all this fabric all right, this is my tape measure. This is my swatch, but it's like in the form of a tape. All right, I take some masking tape because you'll never remember this, believe me. Take some masking tape, and on the back, on the masking tape, I write down Karen's yarn number eight right there. And I put Vanna's yarn, or Vanna, number nine on the correct side. Does that make sense? Now it's always there and on my tape. I will always have this. Now, like I say, if I'm working with Karen Simply Soft or other yarns, uh, say Hobby Lobby's uh, Soft Secret or anything that's, uh, you know, of the same weight, I can simply take that yarn, this tape, met, put it up around where I want the sweater to end, give it a nice pull because it will stretch a little bit and I'd have markers okay and then once I mark it and it's you gonna may have to do this a couple of times maybe more than that to get a good number to get a good fit to get the idea of this first so you'd stretch it around where you kind of want it then you you'd have you know have some safety pins or some kind of little markers little uh, markers there then you're gonna sit down and you're gonna count you're gonna take your time I get me a double pointed needle or something to help me count because after a while your eyes, the stitches start running together. So I go one, two, three, and I count four, five, six, and I count the number that it took to go from my left side, from my real waist, across the front to my right side, okay? And I take that number and I write it down on, you have your little, little 
scratch pad. I write it down. Okay. Now, this is the thing that helps you. Whatever that number is, okay. Say if that number is um, 89. Say it. Say you. It, it was 89 stitches. You go, okay, I've counted, I've done it two or three times, and look like I keep coming around, out around 88 or 89 stitches. All right, take that number and round it either up or down to the nearest number divisible by four. This will make your life so much easier, and it will, you will not be, you, you, I'm going to have to just show you. <laughs> When we get to our actual knitting project so round the number up if you keep coming up with 89 just round it back down to 88 that becomes your number 88 stitches mine are not, is 92 you know maybe mine was 90 and I just rounded up to 92 you know if I wanted it a little snugger I could have round back down to 88 you know but I'm, I always like to go up a little bit. <laughs> I never know <laughs> how my diet's going to go. <laughs> so, you round the number off. Okay, up. Round that number off to a number divisible by four. And that becomes this bottom of your sweater or top. Uh, that's only for the front. Of course, you have to have that same number will work, will be on the back. You see? So if I was doing one where I came all around, you know, completely around, then I just simply add 88 and 88. That takes in the stretch factor and everything because I stretched it and pulled it and counted it several times. And the reason I round it, have you to round it off to four, a number divisible by four, because it's going to make your life wonderful, being able to just separate for fronts and necks and, and putting your sleeve in and everything. It just makes it a lot easier. You'll see. I'll, I'll show you. So you go, okay. All right. So that becomes that number. Then, of course, you need to have a number um you need to take your little tape and you need to give me a, a measurement from the top of your shoulder down to where the stop, you know, to where that sweater stops. And normally I use 20 inches. Um, and these numbers are your base. These are numbers that are your base numbers. So 20 inches will work for me for that. Then, of course, eventually you're going to have to find how many, uh, you know, how many inches would be an opening for a sleeve. I use anywhere from 8 to 9 inches. It depends on, you know, what I'm making. But at least I know how many inches it takes for my sleeve opening. All right. Now... Let me see if I how much time to. All right, let me check my camera because I don't want it to stop right now because I'm really I really want to get through this and uh, uh, show you you know because this is gonna be a probably a two part of video to get this cardigan in. But once you get it and once you understand this, you just write it down and you're done. So I'll be right back. Okay, so. You think well what else can what else can I use this this uh, I guess you'd call it a swatch tape <laughs> or my little tape for well a lot of things for instance um, on this sweater on this cardigan we're going to make you know if you had a pattern they would simply tell you how many stitches for your sleeves and right off the bat, you know, I get a pattern and it'll say, well, for your sleeve, you know, to pick up stitches, pick up 80s, pick up, um, you know, 80 stitches or pick up, you know, they give you a number of stitches to pick up or whatever. All right. But since I work with my own numbers and these are numbers I use over and over, I don't hardly ever change the numbers. 
because these are numbers that fit me. I simply change the pattern to make my make my make the pattern fit my numbers. So for instance, I know my best sleeve is 68 stitches. Now, since we round everything off, every, all our numbers are divisible by 4, we round off uh, to numbers divisible by 4, it creates a range. It creates a range in every uh, measurement we take, we do, or every stitch count, and that measurement is at least 4 stitches. So my sleeve would be from 68 to four more stitches up to at least 72. So it's a range and it's separated, you know, by those four stitches. But I know that my best sleeve, like I say, is 68. It looks nice on my arms, it's not bagging or hanging or anything. But now say if I'm since we don't have a pattern and we're making our own pattern and I find a stitch that I want to put in the sleeve, but I need more stitches in 68 to, to center it, to get it in the sleeve or to center the pattern on the sleeve. Well, see, I already have allowed myself four stitches because my range is 68 to 72. Okay, and just to show you how that would work, for instance, all right, so I'm going to, um, you don't know your sleeve. Well, you can just put a mark on your tape here. So I put a mark there, you see that? And then, for instance, I start, you know, I know mine, so I count it up. Take your time, lay it on something like a towel so it won't move. I like to say I use a, uh, sometimes I need use a uh, double-pointed needle or whatever it takes so that you can, uh, you know, so that you can get uh, to count it out. And I counted it out, and then I put a mark there. So there's 68 stitches right there. All right, well, then I can just simply fold this and line my marks up as best I can, you know. And then now I can try and put it now. I'm off camera kind of. But now this, first of all, you know that this is a sweater or a cardigan. So it's meant to be worn over something. You wouldn't wear an open down the front cardigan with no nothing underneath. So I'd put on a t-shirt or one of my blouses or whatever, a sweater. And just put it on like I was going to wear it. And then I'd put my arm in there and pull it up. And then I could see how that number, because it's you're going to make it divisible by four. And you see, so there's a lot of uses for this. So right there, I found my sleeve number. I didn't make a swatch. I didn't do anything. I just use this as my measure. Put a mark, put the two marks together, put a big safety pin or something to hold it. So that you can get your arm in just like you were trying on a dress or, or something at a store or a blouse. I hope that's on camera. I can't get all the way in naked to the camera. But I pull it up as far as I need to go up on my arm to see what kind of room does my arm have in that sleeve count. See? Now, suppose I wanted to make a hat. And I'm thinking, okay, I want to make a hat out of this banner. Well... I would put a little mark so I can start counting. So I'd put a mark here. You know, you just want somewhere to start counting. So I, and I'm doing, I'm going to do it on the two by two rib. Because that's nice to do it on the, on, uh, for a hat. And then you'd start to count. That's two, four, six, eight. And say if the pattern, or if you think, uh, okay, I need 80 stitches. Well, you can count it out and then just like I did my sleeve, use a big pin to secure it in place or whatever around your 80 stitches. And then you can try it on over your head. And that will tell you right then on a size 9 needle because I have this marked on my tape. This is Vanna's yarn. I used a number 9. This is Karen's yarn. I used a number 8 to do my sample. And that will tell you using her yarn what's a good stitch count and you can tighten it up and tighten it up so if you started with 80 you think okay that's too loose then you just keep decreasing by moving decreasing the tape pinning it in place trying it on 
and there you'd have your headband and so on well <laughs> I guess you say what <laughs> that's what I was afraid of when I started when I first came on YouTube to share you know and all I can say is look you know I'm just sharing you know if you if this is just too much just go get a pattern from off of Ravelry. They have beautiful patterns, beautiful professionals over there. <laughs> what else am I going to say? But everything I, you've seen, that's why I have lots of pictures. So that everything that I've made and things that I haven't even photographed yet or in things that we're going to make, I'm going to do it just like I'm showing you. So, let's go through what we need and... Uh, there's two, it's the same pattern, uh, but each one is knit just a little different. There's a little difference. This, the first one, when I was wearing, look at this color. Look at this color of this tweed effect. It's not variegated. I, I don't think, I, I guess you call it variegated. I don't know. I call it tweed. It just looks so pretty. And this is the yarn. You know, I'm going, uh, trying to bring in the Hobby Lobby yarn. And this is Love This Yarn, Super Soft. And the name of this color is Sorbet Ribbon. Sorbet Ribbon. And uh, it's a really good price. You know, it's not that expensive. But you would never know it when you feel it, when you work with it. And like I say, teachers need something they can wash or, or they can, you know, just kind of uh, lightly hand wash or whatever and keep it shape and, uh, you know, because that's what they do. They teach. They work. <laughs> and they work very hard, too. So, let's go over it. So, as you can see, I've got it folded in half. And you can see the little points. Every repeat of the pattern will give you one of these points. Now this is the narrow version and I'll tell you the difference once we get into it. And that means it's just not as wide this direction as one I'm going to show you next. So this one's a little narrower and uh, but they're both work the same. And here's the pretty end. Here's the point. Here's the opposite end. And I just thought it was so pretty. As soon as I saw this yarn my mind just starts spinning. Even though I had no idea it was going to look this pretty once I finished the project. Isn't that pretty? So, this is one yarn. Now for the next... Okay, I have... Um, if you like a wider shawl that you really like to have something a little wider, then here we go with this color. And this color, of course, is from Hobby Lobby also. And it's I Love This Yarn again, super soft, super saving. And this color is Firecracker. <laughs> firecracker. That looks kind of like, um. You know, doesn't it? it looks kind of like fire. Like a celebration. Look how pretty that is. Oops, hit the camera, sorry. And here are the ends. And like I say, all these points, every time you repeat the pattern, you have these beautiful points. Like I say, this is a very simple shawl. Um, if you're looking for something more intricate, you know, and every once in a while you just want to do something simple. Like I said, especially if it's a gift. And teachers, like I say, they work long, hard hours. And this is just something that will be easy to give. And that's the theme. You know, I just want to I dedicate these to teachers. And uh, that was the whole point. And most people know someone or or you have them in your family. So it won't go to waste. But isn't that pretty? Okay, so we have two different styles, well, the same style, but two different widths. You can see how much wider this one is compared to the first one. And we know the yarns. Now, let's talk about the pattern. 
Now, when, you know, when you get your stitch books, and I've used this one before, it's by Karen Hemingway. You could find this in any stitch book. But have you ever noticed that um, when you get a stitch book and use this towards the back, but this one's not, but use this towards the back and you'll come to a section where they have a lot of edging. And of course, some people are like, well, what do you do with these edgings? You know, do you just, do you put them on pillowcases or <laughs> do you just edge something with them? Well, I guess you could. I mean, I don't do that, but you know, I, you know, you, but this is how you can find an edging, put it on the edge. I'm going to find this one. I guess I should have had my page ready. Whoops, I didn't have my page ready. See, now here's a whole selection. Here's a whole group of edging. And she did a very good job because you can see how it looks, how the bottom edge looks. There's that. And here's the one that we're going to do. And this one is called Feather Edging. Feather Edging. And the reason I chose this one is because this one, these these extra rows right here at the top, it created this beautiful transition from where we're going to start to how we're going to add the edge to our shawl. It was already there. Otherwise, maybe sometimes you might have to add that or, or you know, add something else. Maybe like on this one, maybe you would have had to add something different. But it was already there, so that's... Um, that's why I picked this one to, before this edging. Feather edging. And cast on nine stitches because this edging is worked vertical. This edging is worked up the side of the shawl, not straight across, not horizontal, but we're going to have nine stitches and we're going to be working in this direction. Well, what do you think of that? So now, as we uh, continue, you'll see how easy it is to just come up and make your own uh, shawl design simply by going to your edge stitches. Who knew <laughs> that a shawl could be so easy and simple? All right, let me get things set up and we're going to go over how we're going to set up our pattern. Okay, now I've laid this one out so that we can look at it again. And our pattern, I've made my black and white just so I can write all my information down and make any notes and kind of help me figure out how I'm going to uh, make this shawl come to life. And this uh, feather edging calls for a cast on. They actually give you the cast on for the number of stitches for the lace section, which is right here. This is the lace area right there. You can see the points. And so, in order for us to make our formula, you know, I have to have my formula so I can work by. All right, since this is on the left hand side, I'm going to put the pattern. Okay, the pattern has a cast on of nine, nine stitches. That will give me the lace on this pattern. Okay, well, we need more than just the lace. We need something to add on to the lace to make this section of our shawl. And this becomes, I call it, my part. And this is where you can decide what you want on your shawl or how you want to work it or how many stitches or how wide or you know so right here the pattern calls for a cast on of nine stitches now i'm going to put a nice slash right here that will represent a stitch marker that's going to be a marker now on this side of the slash becomes anything that i want to add to make this shawl for me or for my gift okay and so for me I decided I'd like to have three stitches right right after I don't know if this is showing up really well but right after the lace 
I need at least three stitches because I am going to be increasing. The increase will be worked right in this center stockinette section right here. And then this is going to be a border. So this is how, this is what I decided to do. I decided, all right, cast on nine for the lace. Then I'm going to add three stitches so that I can continue to increase from those three stitches to a number or a width that I want for this shawl. And of course, just to kind of give the neck area and to keep it from rolling or whatever, I wanted to have a border. And so with that for a border, and that's B, I decided to have five stitches. Now, if you add up the nine stitches, which is the pattern, that's what the pattern calls for, so we have to go with that. And then my three stitches that I will be increasing into to the width that I want my shawl to be. And then I need, uh, I'm having uh, a five stitch border to go up and around my neck to make my neck look nice and neat. That comes to 17 stitches total for me to cast on for this shawl. Now, once we cast on, um, then we, like I said, we're going to be increasing in the stockinette. This is just work plain, it's just like just like I'm writing for them, this is exactly how you're going to work it. You're going to have five uh, stitches of just knitting every row, like a border. Then you're going to have three stitches, and in this, in these three stitches, we will continue to increase as far as we want to go, and then you will work your lace. And the increase works as follows. An increase is knit into the front and back of the stitch. Then we will work the back. There will be no increases or decreases or anything. We'll just work the pattern. Then when we come down the other side, we have to decrease. And that will be, we will we'll knit to together just that easy all right we're going back to 750 knit stitches the ultimate knit stitch Bible because remember I said we're trying to work out our new books I'll throw in some old ones as I get a chance as we get uh, into more projects but since and a lot of you bought this book I don't get nothing for it I just like to tell you my honest opinion it is just a wonderful book to have and if you bought this book, congratulations, we're going to work out of it. Now, stitch I'm using, I'm trying to move along here. The stitch I'm going to use, oh mercy, when I first start working on this stitch, it just like, it's not that, it, I wouldn't call it an, an advanced stitch, but it's one of those mind-boggling stitches that you really have to kind of pay attention to until you fall into the rhythm. And once you fall into the rhythm of it, then you go, oh, I got it. It's not as hard. But, you know, when we uh, probably started, there, there's going to be some of you going, Jay, there's something wrong with this pattern. I've started it three or four times. Something is wrong with this pattern. No, there's nothing wrong with the pattern. <laughs> it's one of those mind twisters. That's what I want to say, a mind twister. But on page 147 in this book, of knitting stitches I found the lace lattice stitch the lace lattice stitch a multiple of stick of six stitches plus one and there's only eight rows or really four pattern rows cause four of the rows you purl and that's the pattern that I will be using for this pink knit sweater okay so there's my pattern Here's the, where I got the pattern from out of our new book. You know, I don't you know I don't want to have you buy something and then we don't you no. It's really nice. So of course you need to make a black and white. You know, I I make my working copy because I'm gonna be making a lot of notes and you know I have all of that to work from. So I'll sit my book back and then I'll have my black and white to work from. And then, of course, you'll need just your regular stuff. I, I don't, you're, you're, hey, look, you're old enough now. You know what you need. You need some scissors. 
uh, a lot of get some stitch markers pretty some um, simple stitch markers um, uh, I'm gonna go through the calculations of my formula for me and maybe a smaller size just to review just to remind you I always do that I want you to always know how to figure it out and how to um, you know just feel comfortable doing it okay I can't think of anything else okay the yarn the, the needles a pattern well I guess we just need to start working we'll start with working out our formula on this beautiful beautiful pretty lace lattice stitch okay see you back in just a minute okay so let's get ready uh, we've gone over the pattern, and now we want to make our formula for our uh, lace lattice stitch. And it's a multiple of 6 plus 1. So, now, to make our formula, and of course, I'm going to use myself as an example. <laughs> Need your little calculator, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's talk about what, uh, you know, how to set this up. I'm using a U.S. course number nine circular needle. You could use a U.S. number eight. Remember, if you're not, if you rather have your sweater more, uh, a more fitted sweater, then you could easily use a number eight because the yarn, um, the yarn actually calls for a number eight. I've already gone through. I'm using a number nine to get a little more relaxed fit. And it fits me really nice. You know, because I'm large, extra large. <laughs> but, you know, if you're small, you might just like your sweaters to fit a little, uh, be a little more fitting. All right, I'm using a number nine, U.S. number nine. And for my U.S. number nine, I already know my uh, stitch count because I've already figured that out. Uh, you know, video after video, and my number is divisible by four. My number for my number nine is 96 stitches. That's my base number. Now, the pattern is a multiple of six stitches, and at the end of the count, you add plus one. Does that make sense? Just like we've done before. Okay, let's go through this. And I says, as soon as you write out this, then decide how many repeats of the pattern do you think you might like to do. And I'm going to do maybe 10 repeats of this pattern. Because I do have um, on the sweater. Just really quick. This and this sweater, the lace is just, I put the lace right in the center. So there's plenty of stockinette stitches on each side. I didn't go from from the actual side seam to side seam. I kind of put it right in the middle. And my sample, I'm going to show you in just a minute, we're going to even do less than this. But we'll get to that in a minute. So I just wanted to remind you. So I want to do six repeats. Six times, uh, excuse me, ten repeats. Six times ten equals 60 stitches. Add the plus one. And now you have 61 stitches for your pattern. And I'll put it in a box to remind me where my pattern. Oh, I just touched my... Oh, gosh. I just got some pink on my... Oh, God. Okay. Let me see if I can get that off. All right. Stay on the paper, Jay. All right. So now, the next thing to do is simply start subtracting from your base number. Okay. So I have 96 stitches that's what we're talking about and on this sweater i know that i want a border i want a three stitch border i'm not going with the four i'm going to do go with the three stitch three stitches on each side so three and three or six i'm going to put a b for border minus six stitches from my number when you subtract that that leaves you with Oh, am I looking at the wrong? Oh, here it is. <laughs> 90 stitches. I was going to say, where is my paper? Okay, 90 stitches. Okay. Well, what's the next thing we know that we can subtract? 
Well, we just ne we just fin figured our pattern. So P for pattern, and I now can subtract 61 stitches from this 90. And when I subtract 61 from 90, I get 29 stitches. Those are just leftover stitches that I can divide and put on each side of the pattern. Does that make sense? Well, 29 is odd. So if I just add 1, no secret, just add 1 to make it an even number. That's 30. 30 divided by 2. Now I can, I can have 15 stitches on one side of the pattern and 15 stitches on the opposite side. Now I can write the formula just so that I can knit from it so that I don't have to go back and look at all of this math. I can simply have, we know we have a border of three on this side. All right. We know that we can put 15 extra stitches right here. We know that our pattern goes in this block here. And now I just repeat this on the opposite side. And if you add it all up, get my little calculator. If you add it up, let's see, 3 plus 15 plus 61 plus 15 plus 3 equals, oops, wait, 3 plus 15. Oh, I keep doing it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jay's not calculating right today. 3 plus 15 plus 61 plus 15 plus 3 equals 97 stitches. That's what I was trying to get to, people. <laughs> 97 stitches to cast on for my size with my base number of 96 on a size 9 needle. I will cast on 97 stitches. Now, does that make sense? We're back, we've figured the formula. Okay.